going to begin this morning. It says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest, many of us have heard these words before, I'm going to bring our attention again to the words of Jesus. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. So he called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits, to heal every disease and sickness. Then we want to also look at chapter 10, verse 7 and 8. And as you go, he's telling them, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, and drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Father, I thank you for these words this morning to our hearts from, the, from Jesus. And I pray, Lord, that we'll take these words in these next few minutes, Lord, and Lord, that God, by your Holy Spirit, you would speak truth to us. Lord, that you would draw us to the point where we need to make some decisions, Lord, because every time we read the word, it's a point of decision for us. So, Lord, I pray this for each of us today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. There is a story of a man who was asked a very simple question. Are you a believer in the Christian faith? Oh, certainly, he responded. You are a member of some church, I suppose. Member of a church? No, indeed. Why should I be a member of a church? It is quite unnecessary. The dying thief wasn't a member of a church, and he went to heaven. But of course, you've been baptized, right? You know the command to been baptized? Oh no, that's, a, that's another needless ceremony. I'm as safe as the dying thief was, and he was never baptized. But surely, since you're not join, you don't join a church or, or be baptized, you will do something, right, in acknowledgement of your faith? You will give of your means? Uh, you, will, you will help those in need in some way? No, sir. I do nothing of the kind. You see, the dying thief, let me remark, my friend, before you go on any further, that you seem to be on a pretty intimate terms with the dying thief. You seem to derive a great deal of consolation from his career, but mind you, there is one important difference between you and that dying thief. He was a dying thief, and you are a living one. Now you're getting it. Think about it for a moment. The head of Kraft, everybody like Kraft macaroni and cheese. The head of Kraft macaroni, Kraft cheese, said something very profound, and I quote. He said, the only investment I ever made which has paid consistently increasing dividends is the money I have given to the Lord. Isn't that good? Now this morning you might think, oh, pastor's going to talk about money. Well, in my message, if it applies, take that. Freely you have received, freely give. You might instantly think, oh, he's talking about our finances. He's talking about something much more than that. I think that's just a, that's just a product. That's just one blessing of being able to freely give of yourself. You see, we sang that song. Well, we didn't sing it this morning, rather, but I was singing it this week, and I was preparing a message. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation. So what? Rich and free. Freely you have received. Freely give. Communion this morning reminded us again of the free gift of salvation, right? But what is expected of all of us who have received this amazing gift? This gift of grace and forgiveness. You see, this grace and forgiveness that we receive, we're supposed to do something with it. 
right? Something's expected of us because Jesus himself said it. Freely you have received. We didn't pay for it. It didn't cost us any money. It didn't cost us any good works. Freely you've received it. Now I expect you freely give. It wasn't a suggestion. Rather, it was a command. He spoke it to his disciples. During the years of his ministry on this earth, and they were short, weren't they? Just a few years. He gives those who are following Him instructions. How many of you like to give instructions to your kids and hope they listen? They get to be 18. You know what? I'm still giving them instructions. You think, wow, they're 18, they're adults, they're on their own. I'm still, as long as they'll take them, I'll give them. Because I want to help them. I want to direct them. I want to be a guide to them. And, and, and Jesus, you know, Jesus knew he was only here for a few years. He knew he was going to leave and go back to the Father. So he's given as much instruction to his disciples as he possibly could give. And he prefaced it all by saying, listen, freely you have received. Freely give. I suppose that could basically sum up our life. You know, last week, I spoke on a message about keeping heaven in view and what that means to us. Keeping heaven in view this morning causes me to want to do more about giving of myself. You know, when you think about what you're taking with you to heaven, it's about eternal things. It's about eternal things. It's about people. The church is about people. Your life should be about others. That's what Jesus said. People like to, some people like to just hibernate and just kind of be alone all the time. You know what? That's not what God created you to be. He wants you to have fellowship. He wants you to encourage others. He wants you to reach others and join with Him in the cause of seeking and saving the lost. That's what this church needs to be doing. That's what we need to continue to do because freely we have received, so freely we must give. And God wants to use us. God wants to use every single one of us to touch a life for Jesus. He says several things here in this passage of Scripture. Even in these few words that are written here, it's packed full of things. That, and I just want to highlight a few of them and actually go into another passage to, to end out my message this morning. But let's start by reminding ourselves of the, the first words he says. Freely you have what? Received. You've received. Would you do something with me for a moment? Would you think back to the day you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Young people, hopefully there was a day that you can remember. You think back, man, I know when I said yes to Jesus. I said yes. I gave my life to him. How many of you are doing that with me right now? I have, for me, I have to go way back. <laughs> I was eight years old. I still remember the night on a Sunday night I received Jesus as Lord and Savior. I don't know if it was just recent for some of you or you have to go all the way back. But you know what? Regardless, if you know you've given your heart and life to Jesus, think about what it was like when you did that. You know what? When you remember what happened and why you said yes to Jesus, I want to know this morning, have you ever ever lost that moment? Have you ever felt like it's something in the distant past? Have you ever felt like, it? well, it's just some hallmark experience back there that I'm so glad I did? But you know what? Jesus wants us to live it every day. He wants us to be reminded of it. When we take of communion, what are we doing? We're being reminded of that moment where we receive Jesus into our lives. Nothing you could do. The word is freely. Everybody say freely. Freely. Read to you in Romans. I am justified freely through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing I could ever do to attain that such great salvation. Therefore, I hold on to it dearly with all my life. Some people treat their salvation so flippantly, with no regard. Peter said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. 
You say, wait a minute. I received this freely. What do you mean, work it out? <laughs> that means, you know, this precious gift that I've been given, if you're not careful, it can slip out of your fingers. Paul said many times, he said, people have shipwrecked their faith. Or they desert it to go after the things of the world. I'm just pointing out passages of Scripture in the New Testament that tell us we've got to be careful. Lest that which we have received freely gets loose and we can become shipwreck. The very words of the Apostle Paul. How many think those words are true today? Someone receives this free gift of salvation. But if you don't work it out, if you don't keep living your life day after day saying, Jesus, I die to myself. I die to my natural man. I die to my sin. Lord, I'm going to live my life for you. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him. All to Jesus I surrender. Church, We've received freely. Therefore, our life will give a testament to the very fact that I owe my life to Jesus. When you stand before Jesus someday, when we all have to stand before Him, my friend, you all will have to stand before Jesus. I'm going to embrace Him. Are you going to embrace Him? I fall at His feet first. Jesus, You gave it all. And I gave it all back to you. I gave it all back to you. That's what our life should be. We come to him as a faith of a child. And as I was preparing the message this week, I also kept going back to scriptures that came to popping into my spirit. How many have that happen? Just scriptures just keep popping in there and you keep going back and talking about how we freely receive. Made me think of children. How many know kids usually freely receive? <laughs> You're like, can I go buy you ice cream? Oh, sure. Would you like this? Oh, sure. I very rarely hear kids say, no, I don't want it. It's usually, yeah, yeah. It's free? Some of you like to look for free stuff. Along the side of the road, it's free. You pick it up. You don't need it, but it, you pick it up because it's free. And you got to get rid of it someday. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're by nature that love things for free, right? But the thing of it is, is there's something so valuable to us that there is no amount of the millions and billions and trillions of dollars of this world and nothing you could ever have or ever hope to have would fill the void in your life and forgive you of your sins. Only Jesus and His precious blood. But you come to Him as the faith of a child, He said. He says, unless you become like these, these little ones, not inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's why it's so important for us when we come before Him to freely receive what He has given to us. God and His great love for us. Not willing that we should perish, but all should in, in, inherit and, and experience eternal life. We come to Him in trust and we come to Him in His Word. We take it as His Word. There's also something else that I see here in these words that, that Jesus says, and I see a, a desire, and I, I know that these are kind of tying in with each other, but there's a desire where he says, freely you have received, he says, freely give. Now, think about what that means to you. Do you freely give? Two words, freely and give. Powerful words used side by side. This is your response. This is the response that you will stand before Jesus and give an account for. Every follower of Christ will stand before Him. Did you freely give? It's important to understand what's going on here. He's got the 12 disciples. You know what, he's beginning his ministry here and, and he's, he's, he's called all of these 12 together to follow him. They're leaving their fishing nets, they're living their, their occupations and they're following Jesus. And you know, he's a good delegator. Just a good delegator. This is where it first started. This is really the whole idea of the church started right here. 
Jesus is like, you know, Jesus could only be in one place at one time, right? He's walking in flesh and blood. But the burden for people to be sought out and saved because they're lost was so great. He's like, you know what? I can only be in one place at one time. So you 12 disciples, listen. Freely you've received from me, now freely give. Now go. Now go. But Jesus, can we just stick here with you? This is so cool. You know, we're by the fire and we're talking. We're having a good time. We're watching everything you do. He says, freely you receive, now freely go. Now go. Well, wait a minute. Now, yeah, they, they hung around him a lot, but there were times where they were what? Going out. I want you to get that picture in your mind. You people think that the disciples were with him 24-7. Ah. He says you go into different places, and if they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet and move on, right? Don't ask anything. Freely you've received, now freely give. When you go out and preach this good news of the kingdom, there's no strings attached. Don't you go up to him and say, can I spend the night? And, uh, and oh, by the way, I'm going to preach. Can you, uh, can you give me something for that? Can you do this for me? There's no give and take here. It's just freely give it. Let the Lord take care of you. This gospel of the kingdom expects nothing in return except simply sharing your faith. And we live in a world like, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Jesus is saying, freely you receive. He's telling the disciples, freely go, go. Well, Jesus, where are we going to spend the night? What are we going to do? How are we going to get fed? No, you just go, don't, and I will take care of you. God's watching out for you. He'll, he'll take care of your needs. Don't go with an expectation that something else is going to come back to you in return. It's simply a commandment, and it's a commandment that will result, give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. You always get in our minds it's a money thing. Well, there's a part of it that is your finances. And in the context of many passages of Scripture, it does talk about our financial resources. But I believe it goes much further than that. How many have ever just given of yourself to someone? You mowed somebody's yard. You helped somebody build something. You took somebody a meal. You just took some time to pray for somebody. How many of you know when you give of yourself, it comes back? It comes back in awesome ways that I could get testimonies from you this morning. We are to give of this message of salvation, church. Salvation, healing, deliverance. And that's what he told them to do. You look what he asked them to do. Man, I want you to go out there and cleanse the leper and heal the sick and cast out demons. And they're like, whoa, what, Jesus? What are you asking us to do? But Jesus gave them something so they could do it. That's coming up here in just a moment. A genuine salvation experience will create in you a desire to share it. A desire to share it. A desire to make an impact on somebody else's life. Austin and... Not Austin. <laughs> Elijah. <laughs> Elijah and Keith and Joey, who's not here today, all went to camp a couple weeks ago, didn't you guys? It was awesome. They love camp. Elijah's been going to camp since he could go to camp. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when he was real little. I'm going to camp. I'm like, okay, there you go. Here, here's the deal. You know this, boys, you know this. When you go to camp, and I heard some things out of your mouth after camp, which really encouraged my heart, Keith. They go to camp for a week and they experience what their salvation is really all about, right? When you leave camp from that experience, it's not like, okay, well, that's cool till next year. You want to do something about it, right? You want to touch somebody. We talked about that Wednesday night in youth group. You want to touch somebody, or two weeks ago, whatever it was. We want to touch somebody with that experience that you have. You want to give of yourself, right? He said, man, I want to touch youth, right, Keith? I want to touch youth. What, what's going on here? It's because when you have a, an experience with the Lord, you've been freely given something, now you want to freely give. You know what? Everyone in the church ought to be free givers. You ought to. 
Everyone in God's kingdom should be a free giver of themselves, of what they have, of what they can do, of their talents. Somebody say, Pastor Dave, I can fix that. Hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of projects around this church. And someone says, I can fix that. And I'm like, praise God. Something is happening in your life because of what Jesus has done. You'll volunteer for something. You'll say, Pastor, I volunteer to do that. You know what? You're freely given. You're not looking for me to give you a, a paycheck on the way out the door. You're like, hey, I'll do this freely because of what Jesus has done in my life. Oh, of, this is how I'm feeling, church. I'm feeling this way, and I'll probably be speaking to this matter for a few weeks now as messages come to my heart that I need to share. I really believe that a generous people, a generous people, a serving people, people who know how to freely give and are ready to do that can turn their world upside down for Jesus. You know, the early church was known, those disciples were going out. They were being known as people who were turning cities upside down. And I quote that from the Scriptures. Things were happening because people were looking beyond themselves. They were looking into their world. They were looking into their community. They were looking at every age. Every age group in the church is valuable and important place to gather, to bring the lost, to bring the sick, to those who need to come to Jesus, just like you did when you came to Jesus. Don't you want others to experience the same thing? Every ministry? We have to bring them in. That's what the church has to do. We together have to bring them in. It's a cooperative effort. Through every ministry of our church, for every acquaintance that you have, for every people group that you hang with and that you're a part of, you're a part of bringing them into the kingdom to go into all the world and preach the gospel. To go where people are. In two months, can't believe it's coming up that quick. We're going to be down at our blessing center in two months. And we're going to be spending the day giving to our community. If you want to help with that, hallelujah, freely give. Maybe you can give a few hours on a Saturday. We literally have impacted hundreds, if not thousands of people. I know thousands over the last several years through our pumpkin festival outreach. Those of you who've been a part of it, you know what we're doing? We're going to where the people are. We want to freely give. Too many want to be like the disciples may have wanted to be. Can we just stay here with you, Jesus? This is cool. This is great. We're comfortable here, and you just talk to us and pour into us, and Jesus is like, no, now go. Freely give. The church must be people that know how to freely give of themselves. Not to be perfect. Not to, not to have it all together, because we all know none of us are there. But just to say, Lord... How can I touch lives for you? That's why we even exist. The church exists for this very reason of freely giving in cooperation with the Lord to do the things He's asked us to do. Because He's given us the authority to do it. The authority. Matthew 16, 9, He says, I can't do it in myself. And Jesus says, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Who is he speaking to? His followers, his disciples. Mark 16 and 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. The list goes on, but I just chose that verse to emphasize these three words. In my name. It's in no other name but Jesus. The church should be known as a people who know how to call on the name of Jesus. People who know how to reach people in the name of Jesus. In my spirit this morning, I can see children walking through those back doors in just four weeks on a Wednesday night coming in to hear about Jesus. Anybody with me say amen. I can see them coming through the back door excited to be in a construction zone. 
I can see kids coming in on a Sunday morning and then rushing out the door to go to Sunday school class. I can see that in Jesus' name. I can see downstairs young people coming in through the back doors excited to get to youth group so they can hear about Jesus. I can see that. I can see that. Because we freely give. See families, whole families coming through the doors of our church realizing this world has left me desperate. This world has left me bankrupt. This world has turned out differently than I thought. And I need a Savior. I need Jesus. I need my life to get fixed. And the only one that can do it is Jesus. I can see our greeters at the door with smiles on their faces and the ushers and those at the door and those in the nursery welcoming little children into the nursery. I can see all of that. Can you? Because we freely give here. But if we lose that, what do we got left? I can tell you from experience in ministry over the last almost 30 years, that I've known churches and been a part of churches that have lost what it means to freely give. And some of their doors are closed today because they forgot what it means to freely give. I don't believe that for here for a moment. I believe in this place that we have those that desire, and I hope we're all involved in this, to say, what can I do for the kingdom, Jesus? Jesus is standing here before us today. I'll step aside. I'll let Jesus tell you what He said to His disciples. And He's looking at every one of you right now by name. And He's saying to you, freely you have received. And you can see the nail prints in his hands and in his feet. And you can see him in his eyes speaking directly to you, saying, freely you have received. Now freely give. Now go. Jesus gave us authority. He also gave us power to do it. Say, oh, I can't do this in myself. You know, I, 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 you know maybe, maybe you're thinking about your age or maybe you're thinking about your physical being or, or whatever it is or your life and how things are going. Listen, until you breathe your last breath, Jesus has given you all authority. Jesus has given you all power to accomplish what He has set out to do in your life. All the days of your life have been recorded in heaven before one of them has ever come to be. And you're here today, you know why? Because there's another day in the book that God has for your life to do something. You chose this morning to get out of bed. And in this day, God knew this day before it ever happened this morning, my friend. Before the sun ever came up this morning, God knew who was going to be here. And you're here. Isn't that pretty awesome? If He can know that, and He can know all the hairs on my head, and He knows the hairs that are turning gray... (laughs) <laughs> and, he, and he knows the hair that's falling out. You know, he knows all of this. And he's like, freely you have received, Dave. Freely give. And I have decided. I have decided. And I close with this. There's other scriptures about the authority. You guys know them. I have decided that the, for the rest of my life, I will freely give. And I mean it. Whether anyone wants to be free givers with me or not, I'm going to be a free giver. That means with everything. That means with my finances. That means with my time. That means with whatever I have talents, listen, I'll freely give under your car hood, but you might not want me there. Okay? (laughs) Yeah, I might have to ask for some help, but I'll I'll hold a wrench. (laughs) Right? I'll I'll clean the bathrooms here at the church, which I have. Some people, does pastor ever clean the bathrooms? I've cleaned the bathrooms here at the church. Sure I have. Have I ever run the vacuum up and down these... These, I've run the vacuum up and down here. Sure I have. I will freely give because I'm in this with you. 
I've loved for the last four years getting on a school bus on Wednesday night and riding with kids to get kids picked up for construction zone. Right, right, Mike? You've joined me on there. Dave, you've been driving that bus. Absolutely. What are we doing? What are we even doing? Why are we even doing this? It's because when I see little kids get on the bus and I sit there and talk to them on the bus and they say, Pastor Dave, I've never been to church before. And they're six, seven years old. I'm, I've never been to church before. What do I expect? How I many of you know that's why we freely give? When those young people come downstairs and they unload, young people like to unload. <laughs> right, Duff? They just like to unload everything. This is what's going on in my life. And you're like, whoa, this is heavy. You know what you do? You freely give because you have freely received. When somebody says, I really have a prayer need in my life, you don't just say, well, I'll pray for you and go home. You stop right there and you freely give. I want to see freely giving prayer all over this place. Freely giving prayer all over this place. Just saying, Lord, when I stand before you, and how many knows in 50 years for a lot of us, I'm just saying 50 years for a lot of us, we're already going to be at that point. Right? We're already going to be at that point. For all of us, a hundred years, right? Most of us. We're going to be at that point in eternity. And so with this time that we have, that's why Jesus said, and I come back to this, now close. He said at the beginning when he looked at his disciples, he says, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Go into those fields. Even now as I'm driving out into the country, the corn's getting really tall, right? I've watched it. It's amazing within the last five weeks. The corn that was way down here is shooting up here. Elijah's out there working in the fields. He says, Dad, I can't hardly reach the tassels. They're so high. What's going to happen in the next four weeks? They're going to get brown. It's going to get ripe. And the harvest will be here. Folks, the physical harvest is going... Some of you are already harvesting from your gardens. The physical harvest is going to be here within weeks, right? But I want you to think about the spiritual harvest when Jesus says it's already ripe unto harvest. Where are the workers? Where are the laborers? Where are those who freely give? So the 12 disciples, listen, go. There's another passage later on in his ministry where he sends out 72, two by two, right? 72, two by two, and he sends them out too. He's towards the end of his earthly ministry and he realizes even more as he's preparing to give his life on the cross. He sees this crowd and he's like, there are laborers right there in my midst that I've been pouring my life into. Now you 72, go and do the same in my authority and in the power that I give you so I send you forth. When Jesus left this earth at that final moment, and he said, go into Jerusalem and wait until you be endued with power on high and you will be my witnesses. Church, let's be those kind of people. As we get closer and closer to some things we want to do, some ministries that we want to just get flourished in and see God use us for the glory of the kingdom, some things God's already stirring, some things I believe God's going to stir, I want you to get into your heart and get into your spirit what God wants you to do and then be someone that knows how to freely give. Father, we're praying right now. Father, I thank you right now for this moment. I thank you, Lord, as we pray that, Father God, that you look into our lives. God, that you know our hearts. You know, Father, the depths of each of us, and you know the things that we deal and struggle with. And God, you understand, and you're ready to help us. You're ready to give us strength. Lord, you've equipped us. Father, my responsibility as a pastor is to equip God's people for works of service, to equip people to be free givers. We've received so much. Now, Father, use us. Lord, let us be those people that, Father, you can flow through and that you can use for your kingdom's sake. 
Father, we're believing for many children and young people in the weeks to come and whole families, Father, to be impacted by the gospel to not, and to be impacted by our personal relationship and witness with people. Father, you're asking us to get out of our comfort zones, to get to know people that we might not know yet. Lord, to listen to their hurts, to listen to their dreams, to listen to their issues and trials, and to be there for them. God, you're preparing us now because the harvest is ripe. Lord, I pray the laborers are right here, right here, right now. Lord, bring us.